Hello everyone and welcome to the new episode about working with Arctable. In this episode I have decided to uh, revisit Channel Mixer because we have used it uh, quite intensively in the last episodes and a lot of users still have difficulties to understand which inputs in which channels to use for which purposes. So I will try to explain the Channel Mixer a bit differently with the hope that uh, you can use it more intuitively. Okay, let's get started. For demonstration how the channel mixer works, I will use a GIMP because I would like to use also these schematics here. And if I use these schematics in the, in the, in the dark table, we could have a lot of issues because there are different uh, color spaces and uh, uh, color calibration expects linear color, color space even if I um, convert these uh, graphics into some linear color space we will also have some issues and so on so to avoid any uh, confusion about that we will now work in uh, GIMP for for a moment when we use these uh, schematics and when we uh, uh, try to um, improve our row files with channel mixer we will then go back to the dark table the only difference between channel mixer in gimp and channel mixer in the dark table is that in gimp you have all three channels with three different inputs on one place and in dark table you have for each channel one uh, special tab but they are they're working the same the same logic these schematics can show us uh, nicely how the additive color mixing in digital world works and we have three primary colors red green and blue and other colors are created by combination of those three channels so we have three different pairs of the channels and with these pairs we can create other colors for example if we have same amount of green and red we have now yellow here without blue and if we want to have magenta we need to combine red and blue in blue same amount of both uh, colors and we have magenta without green and the same for cyan green and blue without red and what white color we get uh, if you have the same amount of all three channels there so we can get uh, the white if you want to have gray, we need to lower equally all three channels and so on. So that is how the main, uh, there's, there's are three main channels with three uh, secondary colors, but we can have also the other colors, so-called third uh, or, or tertiary colors. And those colors we can get if we don't have, if we have, uh, if you use some pairs, but don't have the same amount of that particular uh, um, primary for example if you want to have orange we can lower amount of green and you have now orange so the orange is practically uh, let's say um, some kind of uh, more reddish yellow and so you can get also other colors here for example if you want to have some purple or violet we need to remove a little bit of red or lower the amount of red and we will do that and now you have something like purple or violet <clears throat> and so on we don't need to to create every color now here and that is how the um, additive color mixing works so for the demonstration before I have used only the main sliders in each channel <clears throat> but what does the other channels or the other uh, sliders or inputs so we have, for example, in blue channel, we have uh, red and blue, green and blue, and or in dark table, it's called uh, input red and input green. Now, if, if we are in the blue channel here, <coughs> we have input red and input green, but that is the same as in uh, GIMP, red and blue channel and green and blue channel. Okay, so to demonstrate what those two sliders now do, I will now remove <coughs> the other two, Let's start with the blue channel. I will remove the green and red down 
so that we only have a blue channel. So let's do that correctly. Zero. And also here, zero. And now we have only blue channel. And those other two channels, or two other primaries, are to zero. We don't have any uh, color there. So what happens now if I move input red in the blue channel? Again, that will be input red, this one. So in uh, channel mixer in GIMP, that is a red and blue channel, let's see what, what is happening. And now we have add the blue in the area where we have pixels that had red color. So we have practically add the blue in the red channel. That's all. And the same is with green. Now we have by using input green, we have added the blue there in the area where the pixel have some green or uh, uh, for green. So to play a little bit with that, to understand how that works <coughs> even better, now we will have, we will or rotate the same that schematics. So we will like to have blue in the green here and green here in the red. And we will also have to like to have a red in the blue. So let's see how can that be done. Now we can uh, we can now add the blue to the green. So what we need to do is to lower the green to the zero itself by using input green, so to say, in green channel, and go to zero. And now we can add blue. <coughs> excuse me. We can add blue in that channel by using input green in the blue channel. Bam. And now what we need to do, we need to uh, remove red to get the green there. So we'll go to the red channel now, remove red. Let's put it at a zero. And now we can use a green channel to add the green there. So what can we use? Red and green channel, logically, or input red in the green channel. Let's go to the one. So, and also for the blue, we need to uh, remove blue and add red there. So, we are going to the blue channel and remove the blue itself there. Let's say zero. And now we can use red channel to add red there. So, logically, we will use blue in the red channel or input blue in the red channel. Bam, zero, I'm one. And now we have rotated our schematics in the clock, clockwise. Okay, let's see, let's stay with the blue again and see what happens if we uh, manipulate input red and input green in the blue channel without lowering the values of the red and green. So if I, for example, if I add blue into the red channel and red channel already exists, if I add one to one, go to one here. <clears throat> now we have, logically, we have magenta here because we have equal amount of red and blue there. And we also have white point with intersection between green and red because we have the, all three channels are the same, have the same value there. And we can also lower the, the blue in the red channel. So let's see what happens there. Now, if we use that uh, input red in blue channel to lower the blue, logically, we can only lower in those, th those areas where we already have blue. So it's only in intersection between those two channels. So and that is quite important. If you lower now the the uh, blue in the red channel, so, so to say, in the area with the pixels that have a red channel, <coughs> you only remove those blue or uh, those blues or lower those blues. They are in the in, in the intersection. So we have we had cyan here. Now we have red, and of course we also change in the white point because now in this area we don't have any blue, so dominates red and green there. 
So, and you can do that with all other ch channels. The question is, why is that useful? What can be done with that? Why, one quite important thing to memorize is also, the higher the value in, of some primary, the higher the change when you use the slider for that particular uh, uh, primary. For example, we have here 100% of blue, and when we go to the half, we have removed 50% blue here, and because we have only 50% blue there, and when we lower it to the half, we only lowering it to 25%. So that means uh, yeah, higher, uh, the higher the, the value of the particular uh, primary, the higher also the change that you uh, are doing in with the particular slider there. That also applies for the others. For example, if I now uh, use input red to add the blue in the red channel, you see, uh, if I now move to the one, we didn't change at all this one. We didn't add uh, exactly the same amount as in the red, poor red. So that means the pure, the, uh, the color itself, the primary color, the higher the change with the sliders. Okay, but now is the question. <coughs> What can be what can be done with the channel mixer? So let's say we have this situation. I have some a photo with a nice magenta flower, and I have the sky with white clouds, and sky is of course blue. Sky. And now the idea is, I would like to have that flower red but without influencing the sky and the clouds, the color of those two areas. Now, if I use input blue itself to lower the blue so that I have could have the uh, red here, I will also influence the sky and the, the, the clouds, so the sky will be <clears throat> darker, or um, the sky is normally not only blue, but uh, have some amount of green, and we will have all that, that color. So that's not a good way to do that. What we can do, because now we have input red and input green, we can influence only those areas where, with, where those other channels are intersecting the or blue. So for example, if I want to have a red flower without influencing the sky, I can use now uh, input red to lower the blue in that area. And now I have practically a red uh, flower. Of course, we have also changed the color of the neutral color. For example, we have changed the color of the clouds. Now it's a yellowish, but we can now use also the green, input green in the blue channel to compensate that. And now we will have some kind of a nice change with a red flower and uh, sky and, and the uh, clouds are not changed. We, we have changed a little bit the green channel, but in our case it's not, not important. So let's say in concrete example in the arc table, how can we, that be useful? So we have here a nice example. We have uh, our magenta flower. Let's say we want to have that flower red. And first, what we need to do, we will use the first instance of color calibration just to uh, improve the white balance. So we'll go to the white balance thingy, and that's too bluish. And I assume that background should be gray, so let's use the background for uh, white balancing. <clears throat> and I have we have prepared our photo. So to be able to remove that magenta, you see that magenta, that is quite similar the color here although the flower had a bit more red, but it's quite close to the magenta. So we here we have combination between red, red and blue. And to um, get that, blue, that uh, flower red, we need to lower the value of the blue in that area. So we don't want to uh, lower the value of the blue everywhere where we have blues, blue uh, color, but just in that intersection between red and blue. So we will use now next instance of the color calibration, go to the blue channel, and we don't want to 
um, lower the value of the blue everywhere, just in an intersection between red and blue, and that will be our input red. As you remember, yeah, input. To, let me get bring that down. So we want to influence the blue there. So we can use input red so that we influence only the blue in that intersection between red and blue channel. So let's go back to the dark table. And now we can use input red to lower the down. And of course we have changed also the background, white point. And now we can compensate that by adding input green to the blue or uh, to uh, uh, increase the value of the blue, but only in the green channel. So we don't influence the flower that much. Something like that. And now we have changed the color practically of the flower without um, changing much to everything else. Of course, we have also added a bit blue in the green channel itself. So now we have a bit more bluish um, leaves and other part of the flower, but it doesn't matter that much. So let's say I would also like to have uh, some um, let's say colder background so that we have a nice contrast between the flower and the background. So as you can remember, the first step what we have done, we have we wanted that flower to be reddish. So we have lowered the input red in the blue channel so that we don't influence other parts of the blue. <clears throat> and of course we have compensate that by adding input green to the um, uh, or blue with input clean so that we have back our white point or our gray point and now we want to have that a bit more bluish so that we have a difference between uh, the red flower and background of course what we need to do we need to lower the amount of red in this area and if you do that with red itself we will also reduce the red in the flower so that what we didn't uh, get anything what we need to do we can use now other inputs just to influence the intersection between red and other uh, channels so let's go back with red here and we can use either green or blue to get that to uh, lower the red in uh, that white point area or we can also combine them, that bo both of them and we will still have that uh, nice um, bluish um, background. So let's do that in the dark table. So what we need to go, we need to go to the red channel or let me add one more color calibration instance or no, we don't need it. We can go there direct to the red, I think, and now we can lower those two sliders, input red and input blue. And to compensate the loss in the other areas, we can just add a tiny bit of the red there. And as you can see, we have now improved our photo to our liking. Now we have a red flower and the background is a bit more uh, bluish without touching the other colors that much. So what can what else we can do? Let's say I would also like to change the color of the petals of the sunflower here on the bottom. I would like to have the same color as this one here, yellow. So we know the yellow is a combination between green and red and orange also, but in that area where we have orange, uh, the amount of green is a bit lower or we can also say the red dominates there. So to demonstrate that real quick, we have here yellow, that is combination between red and green, but when we now lower the amount of green <coughs> in that area, <coughs> which please that area, we will get orange. So that means uh, in that area dominates the red channel. <coughs> and what can be done to uh, get that uh, back to yellow? Now, I have also prepared this one, where we have 
some yellow patch and now also darkened the whole uh, photo or whole, whole um, schematics to be able to show you what what happens if we add uh, a green in that area in also in the white point here so let's try that with channel mixer so the idea is to get that yellow we need to add green there now if i do that with a input green itself you see i have changed everything else but not that much uh, this that area because in that area uh, we have red channel dominates so that means uh, according to our proportions uh, that i have described before uh, if we are using input green we are adding much more green in that area where the green is poor than in those area where the green is low so uh, if you watch this area here here is the green is the lowest now if i use the input green for that i will add a bit more green there a bit green there but not that much as in as in other areas with green so that is not a quite good uh, solution but what we can do we can use another input for adding green in that area and of course that would be the red because red dominates there so and so accordingly we will also use the ratio of that red channel for adding green so because the red dominates there if i use now input green to add uh, input red excuse me to add green i will add a green much more there as you can see also in the poor red we have now practically also the red yellow and to compensate the uh, shift in the white point we can now also remove go down a little bit with a uh, by we can remove the or lower the the green with the green channel because now we will lower in those all those areas much more than here if you use green and green channel because the proportion so <clears throat> the thing what we need to do to be able to get that uh, flowers uh, yellow we need to mask our flower itself because that it will be influenced the most if you use uh, red and green channel or input red in green and we can add then the green with that input uh, red and lower with the input green so let's do that real quick let's go to the our photo and now i will use one more instance of the color calibration and mask first the bottom part a quick mask so disable uh, the mask indicator and now we can go to the green channel and add the green there with input red of course we have also influenced the surrounding but now we can use input green to remove that uh, green again and we will remove it much more in the surrounding than in this area because in this area where, the, where we have petals red dominates the red channel so let's do that as you can see now we can play a little bit with both sliders and now we have changed the color of the petals now we have uh, yellow petals the same like this one so let's see another example so we have here one scene with a berry in the middle and needles the green needles and surrounding and I would like to have the surrounding a bit more white balanced or a bit more uh, greenish or bluish <coughs> greenish without touching that much the berry the color of the berry so first thing what we need to do is to white balance the photo so let's try to do that and as you can see we can ch cannot change that uh, look that much with the white balance so we need to use channel and channel mixer to improve the, the colors so let's use one instance of calibration more 
And now we can play with the channels here. So what needs to be done here? So we need to get rid of that purple, purplish uh, area here. And as you can, as you know, the purple or the magenta is combina combination between red and, and blue. And to be able to uh, get that magenta to be more bluish, or to remove that magenta or that uh, purple, we need to decrease the amount of red there. Now, if I use the red itself, I will influence most those areas where the red dominates. So that's not a good solution. But what I can do, I can use another input to remove that uh, area here. Uh, that to remove that red from that area here and of course because we have combination between red and blue we will use input blue in the red channel to reduce the red and as you can see we have now a bluish area where we have purple and we can also improve um, the now we have leaves there are much bluish and we can also go to the blue channel and also remove or lower the blue from that area by using green in blue channel or input green and now we'll have also the green needles so let's do that in dark table so what needs to be done we have next instance of color calibration as i have said we go to the red channel because we need to, to get rid of that purplish. We need to remove or lower some red there. And we don't want to use the input red because, as you can see, we are influencing our berry here. We don't want that. But what we can do, we can use input blue to do that. Let's see, we're going that far. And now we don't have any purple in the needles. And to get the needles a bit more uh, greenish, we also need to remove blue from the green. So we can go, go to the ch blue channel and use input green just to remove or to lower the blue there. And voila! You see how quickly and easy we have improved the white balance of that photo. We can now add some saturation and whatever. We'll play a bit with... Um, contrast and we have now a nice photo okay next example so here we have a uh, sunflower again and let's improve the photo first and maybe a bit more i don't know a bit more saturation and we also need to use a filmage filmic excuse me rgp maybe compress a little bit that thingy and add some highlight saturation so that we have something like that. Maybe even a bit more contrast. Let's say about there. <laughs> and now we need to white balance the photo. So we'll use color calibration to white balance it and see what we get. And now we have to bluish everything. So we need to go with the chroma big down. I'm just eyeballing the background greens. There should be have a bit more um, yellow, but not that much. And now we have a white balance of photo. <clears throat> okay, it looks quite nice, but what I would like to do, I would like to um, enhance a bit difference between those two areas in the flower. So I would like to have the middle part of the flower here bit more orangey or a bit more reddish in that area so that we have nice distinction between that middle part and, uh, and, and the petals to have that uh, nice uh, color depth. So we are back to our schematics here and we have similar situation as in our flower. So the middle of the, of the flower had a bit more red like this here. And the petals are uh, yellowish. So to get even more red in the orangey part, <clears throat> we need to remove the green from there or lower the green even more. Now, if you use uh, the green, input green itself, we will remove much more 
the green in the surroundings because of that proportions that I've talked before. So the must, much better is to use the input red because in that area dominates the red and we will also, if you use input red for removing or for lowering the green, we will lower in that area much more green than when we use the, the green channel itself. So to demonstrate you that, now we will go to the green channel, we need to lower the green there and we will use input red for that. As you can see, we have already removed quite a lot of green there, much more than in the surroundings. But we have also so influenced the surrounding or the let's say the petals of the flower. So we need to compensate that and we will add the green back only that area just by using input green now because in that area we will add much more much more green than in the in that patch here. So let's do that in our flower. So next instance of color calibration and we'll go to the green. So the idea is to remove green much more from that area here than from the petals and of course we will use according to that schematics what we what i showed you we will use input red to remove green and of course we also influencing the rest but uh, we are removing green the most from that middle area if we use input red to remove green and now we can use input green to add bring the, the green back in other areas and not that much in the middle so let's do that about there as you see you see now the difference it's quite nice now we can go even further if you want so our petals are staying yellow now but we uh, have nice uh, distinction between those two colors of course, we have also influenced the other areas, so we can improve that also. So let's say we can, I don't know, we can remove a bit blue. And we can also darken the blue a bit, so we'll have even higher contrast in the flower. And uh, also play with colorfulness, I don't want to have too much uh, saturation in the background. So I go with the blue a little bit down because we don't have any blue here we don't influence the saturation there <clears throat> and we can add saturation in red and now we have uh, improved our colors of the of the flower and on maybe a slight step we add a bit more contrast and now we can see uh, before and after so where is our color balance uh, i think color calibration first instance here and let's see the difference between those two now as you see how just with one additional instance of color calibration or just with one usage of um, channel mixer we have improved the photo quite a lot okay the next example So this will be our last example and to um, be able to decide what to do with this one we will need to do first some uh, corrections so let's go with lens correction denoising and maybe a bit more exposure contrast add saturation and maybe also rotate in perspective let me see could we have something better? Yeah. And, of course, the last step should be uh, uh, white balance. So let's see what we get with light balance now. Okay, that looks now a bit more colder. <clears throat> and we have prepared our photo to um, adjust the colors. So I would like to improve a little bit the the difference between colder and warmer colors. So we have here some orange and also the wall is a little bit, I will, I will say, yellowish. <clears throat> and I will uh, like to add the contrast in the colors 
in uh, comparison, to, for example, for, to the sky. So, in this case, sky should be more bluish and the uh, rest uh, should stay as it is. So, to be able to do that, we need, of course, to um, lower a bit um, amount of red in the sky. So, what needs to be done, maybe a quick demonstration here with uh, our channel mixer in the GIMP, and we need to lower the amount of red in the in this area. And now, if uh, if we uh, using input red in red channel, of course we will lower that, but most will influence the most the red itself. So that's not the good solution. But we can use some other inputs in the red channel to lower the red in that area. And I think it will be good to use the blue or maybe combination blue and green. And as you can see now we will have the the white is also get a bit more cyany <clears throat> and we didn't touch the red and also the the yellow. So let's do that. So we go to the red and lower amount of red by using input blue maybe also a bit input green and we can now compensate the lost in those area the loss of the red in those area just by adding input red because input red dominates there and I will add much more in those areas than in the other areas where the red not don't dominate so we have something like that <clears throat> maybe just a bit more let's say something like that and um, I will also like to have this area a bit more yellowish so we can remove the blue from this area just by going to blue channel and I don't want to use the blue itself but maybe a green and add the blue back maybe something like that okay and now you see we have um, quite a uh, bluish sky and the other colors are also enhanced oh, let me try a bit more red that's now eyeballing yeah you see now the difference so that is uh, nice difference we have the bluish sky and the other colors are not changed and to uh, improve the photo even better what we also can do, we can now darken a little bit of blue, blue, excuse me, and add some brightness in the red. And we can also darken the sky, because now we can have bluish sky, we can isolate it quite easily with a mask. So we'll go with one more instance of exposure above color calibration one. Oh, excuse me. We need to move the exposure module the next instance of our color calibration where we have changed the colors and now we can use hue for masking something like that and improve the mask a bit brighten that area of influence until we have completely masked the sky and now we need to add some feathering and also to add some drone masks so that we only influence the sky and not the rest so let's do that real quick let's say something like that just quick i don't want to spend too much time now we have <clears throat> isolated our sky and uh, let's disable the mask indicator so now we can darken the sky a little bit more because we have darkened the sky a bit more we can now go to the color balance CGP and add a bit more contrast. So we can use um, highlights thingy in the perceptual brilliance grading. And now our wall is much more bright here. And of course, maybe the last, the last instance of one instance of diffuse and sharpen just for a bit of roughness there. And we have now improved our photo quite a lot. So let's see before and after. 
call a calibration here, take a snapshot, and uh, last step. And as you can see now, we have nice contrast in the colors. And I think, let me see, yeah, we have also nice, um, nice harmony here, split complementary. So we have that yellowish um, or yellow orangey, let's say, wall, and those area here a bit more reddish. And the sky as a blue. So I will say we are finished here. And if you have some questions, please be free to ask in the comment section of the YouTube channel or or also in pixels.us discussion forum. So until the next time, bye bye.